Then FTR did their promo with Tully about being banned from the Battle Royal, and Tully was trying to once again, like Arn did last week, like Tully's done before, try to say something that makes sense out of a situation that makes no logical sense. But as they were getting to that and basically talking about how they've been perceived to be bad people, well, would here's something a bad person would do or whatever. The camera widens out. And now it, I said they were buried and dead before when they started taking bumps for the, the dwarf and, and all the bad booking and everything. But now they just look so fake and so silly. They're just completely ineffectual. The camera widens up. And we are expected to believe that they have kidnapped little dwarf dong sucker and he's handcuffed and duct taped to a chair and with duct tape over his fucking mouth. So they have kidnapped a midget mascot after the week after that they fucking clipped the dinosaur horns off Dino Douche's mask. And we're expected not only to believe that they've done these things, but that the other guys are going to be mad about it because this is such fucking heat. So now this is just as bad and hokey and silly and phony as anything in the WWF, but it's being done with, you can't even use the word talent. It's not like they kidnapped somebody that anybody has a, it, 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 listen to me say that, like that would be believable. It's not like they kidnapped somebody that people like. They've kidnapped a fucking annoying little fucking genetic mutant and they haven't really kidnapped him because nobody believes it. They've beaten him to death. They booked him rotten from the start and they've made FTR and Tully Blanchard a complete non-entity that will not add one single fucking view or rating point or buy rate or anything to anything. Two of the, be the best heel tag team in the world and the best performers up and down in the ring they've got on the roster, and it's been, what, three months or four months maybe, and they've made them completely irrelevant. And now they're kidnapping midgets. And then that was followed by a promo from Jelly Nutella. He's still around, as I mentioned before, but you, did you notice he was next to a big stack of orange highway cones? They actually took a camera out where he was, st he's still doing his community service. On that last fucking violation they sentenced him to, when he was out behind the elementary school sniffing the bicycle seats again, they caught him, and he was supposed to do fucking 50 hours of road cleanup, and they went and shot his promo about his match next week from the side of the fucking interstate where he's doing his community service and he's going to fight the 150 pound fucking mute skateboarder next week. Imagine that. Well, first of all, to the FTR segment, Marco's stunt being kidnapped. This is why Goldberg has security during these empty <laughs> arena shows because anything can happen backstage at a wrestling show. Haven't they done this also? I mean, I mean, we've seen so many people kidnapped in the back and thrown in car trunks or taped to chairs or whatever. Well, their car was stolen. No, Tully was kidnapped by Jelly Nutella in AEW way back when they still had fans That's there. right. Remember That's all of a sudden right. Tully they was on the Tully stage? tied up and fucking <laughs> gagged. So this is the second kidnapping I could think of in AEW history. And, I, and by the way, I'll guarantee you, Tully Blanchard... The reason why Tully Blanchard went along with that was because he found God and got a, a lot nicer because the Tully Blanchard that I knew previous to 1988, if he'd say, yeah, you're going to come out and this midget's going to kidnapped you and tied your hands and duct taped you. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have paid a thousand dollars to hear the fucking promo that came back at me from the real Tully Blanchard. And then when it comes to Jelly Nutella's promo, I must admit, I've softened on him recently because I feel bad for the guy. There's no way. We see all the garbage they push in AEW, all the garbage that gets airtime in AEW. There's no way this guy thought things were going to turn and out. And they still won't put him on, except when they need a job. Now, to be fair, the AEW fans themselves have rejected him, but there's no way this is the way he thought it would work out. So I went into this with an open mind, and I thought it was an all right promo for him, but... The end of it, and the end of every one of his promos, where he said, I'm going to be a bad boy. You're like 30 years old or something. Shut up. He's older than that. That's the worst catchphrase. 
I am the bad boy, so I'm going to be a bad boy. Well, Wait, maybe he's you'll cur- get spanked. He's, I don't he's know. Curly Joe Dorita. I'm a bad boy. Anyway. I mean, Curly jo- Joe Dorita wasn't Curly Joe Dorita, was he? Who am I, I th- thought he was. I thought he was. Oh, no, excuse me. I was I was thinking of Joe Besser. You're thinking of Joe Besser. Excuse me, excuse me. Well, he was a bad boy, too. <laughs> In a very different like, Joe way. Joe Besser was a bad boy, not yes. Curly Joe. Well, they were all bad boys. Yes. They were a lot badder than Joey because they were grown adult men. 